Next up, we have GBM Resources and Peter Roan here. He is the CEO of GBM Resources, the ASX code. I can't get the words out today, Peter. GBZ. Thanks for joining us. Over to you, Peter. Uh, thanks, Kerry. Thanks for the invite. And yeah, it's a pleasure to be presenting at, at the uh, Gold Events Conference. Look forward to sharing our story. We are looking forward to hearing it. Oh, look at that. The important one. Uh, the important disclosures. I'll let uh, you read that in the presentation afterwards. Look, in terms of our strategy, yeah, we're we're very focused on uh, you know exploring and developing world class, high grade gold resources, and our focus really is the Drummond Basin in Queensland. We've got a, a very strong tenement position that we've assembled over the last eighteen months, and we've currently got a resource uh, Jork resource portfolio of about one point five million ounces. Uh, but clear potential with all our targets and uh, both regional and near mine uh, targets to expand that to two to three million ounces. Uh, and really all around a, um, a processing hub model, uh, the Yandan operation is the sort of central to our tenement package, which you'll see. And uh, it's really about assembling that resource package around that hub. And we certainly believe we've got high potential for new discoveries and obviously Queensland, Australia, you know, our projects are in a, in a good mining jurisdiction and uh, obviously low sovereign risk. What have we done over the last couple of years? So, uh, you know, we've had a 400% increase in wow. our gold resources since we got involved in, in these projects. Um, we obviously recently secured the high grade Twin Hills resources uh, in our Drummond Basin package. Uh, we'll talk about that. We joint ventured our Malmesbury project with uh, Novo Resources Corp last year, and uh, certainly they're a great partner to, uh, to, to work with. And we'll talk about that. And we're advancing some of our copper gold uh, ground in Northwest Queensland, north of Ernest Henry. And obviously we've had a you know, significant share price re-rating uh, since, since November 2019. Who are we? Uh, look, we've got a strong uh, team of directors and, and advisors. That, that have a lot of experience globally and, and, and a history of value adding uh, into, into corporates. And uh, I have to interrupt you, Peter, because ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that were on our last conference, where, who do we have there? None other than Brent Cook, who's on the board. And actually, for those that remember, he did mention GBM Resources, Peter. Um, you don't know this, but Brent Cook was actually a keynote at our last virtual gold conference, and he mentioned uh, GBM Resources, and here you are. Now we can learn all about it. Uh, thanks, Kerry. Yeah, look, Peter Mullins, uh, executive chairman, he's got a strong history uh, globally in, in mine exploration and, and exploration geology. Uh, myself, I'm a metallurgist, I'm the MD, a bit unusual for a metallurgist to be sort of leading an exploration uh, sort of development com company, but I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, Brent Cook came on last year as a non-exec director, and he's certainly helping us with our North American investors and, and itching to come to Queensland when, when he can. Um, and Stephen Nano, He's been an, an advisor, a really strong epithermal gold geologist uh, with a lot of experience in South America in, in epithermal gold systems. Uh, corporately, where are we? Uh, 50 million market cap. You know, about 18 months ago, we were six. So, you know, significant wow. uh, air price appreciation. Reasonably well funded at the moment. Obviously, just acquired the white dam operation. So, uh, paid two and a half million dollars or 2.4 million dollars for that. So, that drew down our balances a little bit. Um, share prices had reasonably strong growth, obviously come off in the last um, uh, last six to 12 months with, you know, the softening gold price, but uh, still still a strong uptrend. And Eris, you know, strong cornerstone shareholder with Eris through the Yandan transaction. Look, I'll talk really about our Yandan, uh, Mount Coolin, Twin Hills, Drum and Basin projects. That's our focus. Uh, where are they? They're sort of in central Queensland, Western Mackay. Uh, significant increase in resources over the last 18 months, as, as I mentioned, uh, with initially this, just the Mount Coolin uh, sort of package. Uh, we acquired Yandan in, in um, January this year and, and just signed a binding agreement to acquire the Twin Hills uh, assets off Minjar in, in July 2021. Um, significant ten tenement position. Uh, you'll see that on the following map. and. Uh, Really, some great exploration uh, potential in the, in the in the basin. This is our tenement package. Uh, granted, is the darker orange and uh, and the pale sp uh, striped uh, orange are tenements under application. Uh, we've picked up about four thousand, a bit over four thousand square kilometres of tenements. 
most of the prospective um, drum and basin uh, cycle one volcanics. And uh, you can see all these dots, the green dots and the red and, and yellow dots. They're all prospects that have resources on them. Some of them are not dual compliant, but large number of targets. Uh, the three, uh, the four sort of or five dual targets, uh, Yandan, uh, Koala, Eugenia, Gleneva, and then the Twin Hills assets. And we'll talk about uh, those. We just finished an initial drill program in Yandan, which you'll see on the following slide. We just moved across to drilling this really exciting trend between Gleneva and Eastern Cilicia zone. And, and obviously we're excited to be getting ready to be drilling at Twin Hills as soon as we complete the acquisition from Minja. In terms of Yandan, we just did a, a 5,000 metre plus drilling program in and around the um, East Hill resource uh, here in, um, uh, in, in the slide. Some really good intersections there, 200 metres at 1.6 and 189 metres at two grams. So it's confirming the, the high grade uh, uh, core down there and the lower grade uh, halo. Uh, we'll be basically taking that information into a, into a resource upgrade later in the year and, and there'll be some category upgrades. Elsewhere on this tenement package, the Yandam, we've got Northeast Ridge up in the north and Illamartha. We'll get to drilling those resources later in the in the year or early next year and get them converted into Jork. And then this asset has really got significant processing infrastructure on site. There's no process plant there anymore. It was where Ross Mining uh, mined in the uh, 90s, uh, 80s to 90s. And uh, we, you know, it's, it's certainly got a lot of infrastructure for a development in the, in the future. As I said, the drill program we just completed a few weeks ago, these are for the geologists or the people that like rocks. Um, <laughs> I'm a metallurgist, I like rocks too, but um, I like to crush them up um, <laughs> and get the gold out. Um, but some really interesting uh, epithermal vein textures and in these high grade veins that are, that are sort of cutting through the, uh, the host uh, volcanics. Where to next? Uh, so we've moved the drill rigs over into this uh, trend between Gleneva and Eastern Cilicia Sound. We've got a Jork resource at Gleneva of, of um, just under about 80,000 ounces. Um, but we've done a lot of geophysics work over the last uh, 18, uh, 12 months and identified some really interesting targets here that are south, uh, southeast of Gleneva up here and, and the Eastern Cilicia Sound down here. Uh, so we're starting to drill in this in this corridor, and uh, we'll sort of have results out on on those holes over the next uh, probably month and a half. And then later on, we'll come back to Koala and, and Eugenia up here in the northwest, and uh, do some extension drilling uh, to the to the north and south of Koala Resource, and and in and around the Eugenia Resource to build build out on that resource package. The Twin Hills acquisition, it really transformational project for GBM. It, it gives us a, a much higher grade uh, resource that might help front end a, a mining development. Uh, there's significant high grade uh, intercepts here. Uh, this deposit was mined 309 a little bit in, in, in 2006 and early 2007, unsuccessfully. Uh, look, the gold price was a lot lower back then. And, uh, and with current gold prices, these intervals um, are probably significantly open pitable. Uh, the higher grade uh, core, which you'll see later on, will, will uh, probably be mined underground, but uh, you know, still reasonable grades. When so did you is, acquire Twin Hills? So we did the deal in, in uh, July, and uh, we expect to complete the acquisition uh, around uh, late September, maybe October, when the mining leases can be transferred and the exploration leases can be transferred to GBM. So this is just a bit of a section, again, uh, showing quite high grade intervals um, in, the, in, the load, uh, in the load B area, it comes close to the surface and, and is clearly open pitable. Load A, some of this is probably open pitable, but then the deeper high grade zones here will definitely be uh, uh, you know, potential underground uh, resources. It's poorly drilled below about 250 metres from surface. Um, and this deposit has a bit of optionality that it, it has a decline, an old decline that went into the, um, and they mined a little bit of this uh, load up here. You can see, you can see the stoped out area. Um, so we've got optionality there that we could go underground earlier or, or, or do the open pit earlier. About seven kilometres south of, of, of the loan, of the 309 deposit is, is this loan sister deposit. It's never been mined. Again, some amazing grades, 
uh, and intervals uh, poorly drilled below sort of 250 meters it plunges uh, to the to the north and and uh, looks to be uh, plunging down there there's some good information on our last press release uh, again lower grade zones are not in our resource so these upper areas are not included in the current york resource uh, only only the underground resources um, talk a bit about Malmesbury in victoria so we had this project last year we we basically had some discussions with Novo in, in February last year, and they came in as a joint venture partner. Quentin Hennig loves the project. Uh, as you know, a number of times has said it's really the closest analog to Fosterville that he's seen. Uh, wow. So they, they bought a 50% stake, uh, and they're contributing uh, basically to, to earn another 10% interest by spending $5 million. It's already got a Jork resource on it. Is It's also on a retention license. So it's not just an expiration license. Um, we're managing the expiration and uh, we've got drilling uh, planned for, for around October, um, uh, October this year. Where is it location wise? You can see Fosterville there. So it's in the Bendigo zone, uh, about 50 kilometers south of the Fosterville zone. It's the same age uh, rocks. Um, as I say, Novo's basically earning in another 10% with a $5 million spend. And, you know, we've been doing exploration and gravity and, and other uh, background work over the last six to 12 months and getting ready for drilling uh, in the next couple of months. So I'm really excited about obviously yeah. getting involved in the drilling here and, uh, and uh, getting another interesting, uh, you know, project moving. But the White Dam Copper Gold operation, this, uh, we were in a joint venture with Round Oak Minerals for about 12 months in a 50-50 in a joint venture. We, we bought this asset off Round Oak in, uh, settled in late July uh, for $2.4 million to basically acquire 100% of the, the assets. Uh, so we now have access to 100% of the cash flow. It's a small existing heap that's uh, leaching gold and a little bit of copper. Uh, we're using my expertise to make the operation profitable and generate you know some cash free cash flow for for gbm look the short-term operation is is interesting but the longer term potential is really the resources that are still uh, present on on the mining leases and and the tenements mm. there's a thousand ounce york resource uh we've done a drill drill out program that we finished in in june we're waiting for some final assays we'll then upgrade the, some of the pit optimization work and uh and try and uh, evaluate, you know, the next mining cutbacks on a couple of the pits and one of the deposits that was never mined. Um, so again, you know, significant project assets with with resources, uh, you know, gold plant uh, and the heap leach pads and and a significant tenement package there. Uh, so the value add here is really just getting that plant, getting additional feed on the pads and getting that plant, you know, generating larger amounts of uh, gold and and therefore cash flow. In terms of you know where we are at and and some of the catalysts going forward, you know, we've got a focus board and, and management team with you know a good uh, track record of discovery and, and building you know companies. We've got a reasonable cash and receivables uh, position. We also have um, uh, Novo Script as part of the farm in or, or the joint venture on on the Malmesbury project. It's included in that amount. We've, you know, we've got a one and a half million ounce resource base now in, in the Drummond Basin. So it's a great start, but we believe there's more to come. Uh, we're sort of halfway through a, a 10,000 metre drilling program at the Mount Kool and Yandan projects. Uh, we've announced, as I say, some initial good results from Yandan and, and we've got more to come uh, drilling this Glen Eva Eastern Siliceous trend, which looks really exciting. As soon as we complete with Twin Hills acquisition, we'll, we'll certainly put a rig down there. There's some, there's some really obviously interesting uh, high grade zones and some down plunge and down dip extensions there that look really interesting that need to be tested. So we'll be drilling those later in the year. And then we've got a whole lot of regional projects that I mentioned, you know, another sort of 10 or so uh, targets. A lot of them have non jork resources on them and we're really, we'll start prioritizing which ones of those we advance in, in the back end of 2021 and 2022. And at the moment, you know, we've only got an EV uh, to resource ounce of about $30 an ounce Aussie, so it's it's quite low. Looking for a re-rating there. Um, Armsbury, we talked about uh, GB uh, Novo farming in. We've got a budget approved of 1.6 million for this calendar year, and we're obviously 
advancing that. So that's great, funded by our joint venture partner. And, and as I said, drilling planned in, in October. Uh, white can, I just, can I just interrupt you on that one? Because the Novo resource, the Malmesbury, uh, I mean, that a lot of us know the Fosterville project and what happened there and, and, and how successful that's been. And obviously, Quentin Hene is a, a very bright boy. And you said that they, they, they need to um, spend $5 million to get the extra 10%. Uh, but there you've got an, an exploration budget of $1.6 million. My question is, couldn't you fast track it by um, spending more money? And it sounds crazy, but like uh, increase the number of, of drill holes in the ground, make, make it go a bit quicker. So in other words, increase that exploration budget. They've got to spend the money anyway. Uh, why the 1.6? Yeah, look, it's obviously there, like they're funding the exploration budget. I think we had, we had a reasonable work program this year, finalising a whole lot of, I suppose, dotting the I's and crossing the T's on structural work, uh, soil sampling, rock chip sampling, gravity surveys. Um, so now we've got a good, you know, base load uh, okay. geological database across the whole tenement, uh, the retention licence. Uh, next phase is really, you know, starting the drilling programs and then rolling, you know, more quickly, hopefully, into, into additional drilling programs. But at the end of the day, Novo, you know, it's, it's what Novo wants to spend. They've obviously got, you know, the Pilbara region, you know, to focus on yeah. in the short in terms of getting that operation running. Uh, but as that operation generates cash, I'm sure they'll go harder here. So, uh, as, as a metallurgist, Peter Rona, which one uh, excites you the most? Or are you saying, I love all my children equally? Look, I'm not. Uh, I'm a bit. I'm a bit of a brutalist uh, when it comes to assets. If, if uh, <laughs> they don't perform, they get uh, they, they get, get kicked out of the nest. <laughs> yeah, um, my children. My children probably say the same to me. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Look, look. The, the, the drum and bass, and there's just got so much potential. You know, we've had, you know, the last thirty years, we really haven't had anyone consolidate the basin as we have done. Um, you know, we had Ross mining there in the late. Uh, mid mid eighties to mid nineties, and then a little time with Drum and Gold uh, there. But really, since then, nobody's really had had the patience and the and tenacity yeah. to assemble that package. And and look, we've got to stay focused and, and give it give it justice. And and we're sure we'll find uh, you know many more ounces in in, in the basin. And what was the, the the thought process around the acquisition of Twin Hills? Because that that kind of got you a bit. Uh, Hot under the gills as well, didn't it? With Twin Hills, what's the what's the reasoning behind that as an added acquisition to the stable? Look, it's obviously a, we like the ground. We like the it's a, it's a probably a higher grade, so better quality ounces than our existing portfolio. It, from a development point of view, having higher grade ounces, you know, closer to surface in in a you know open pit with lower strip ratios helps that front loading of some cash and revenue as we as we move to. Um, you know, consider development options. So that's a really important resource from that point of view. Uh, the potential, we just think, like you've got two deposits that are seven kilometres apart on a, on a major structure. You know, what's in between? Like, uh, you know, there hasn't been a lot of geophysics done. We've seen how, you know, interesting the geophysics looks between Glen Eva and, and uh, Eastern Cilicia saying about the same scale trend, you know, six, seven kilometres. Um, so we just, we just love the area. Um, uh, for Jingo, you know, big resource found over sort of 34 years, four or five million ounce resource, you know, continually finding more and more along, along you know, trends. Uh, we just like the basin and it needs, 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 to, be, uh, needs, needs to be drilled. Needs to be drilled. That's what it's all about. Now we're running out of time. Give me a reason why uh, investors should be sitting up and taking notice of GVM resources right now. And they can come and have a chat to you in the Zoom room hour of power later today. But for now... Why GVM? Look, I think uh, you said th three things initially. I thought about the third thing. Um, look, we've got a really good team. We've got some experienced geologists that really know these epithermal gold systems. Um, you know, so great team of people focused on value creation, not just um, you know, drilling and uh, spending money. You know, well, great. All, all about value creation. We've run out of time. Peter Rona from GVM, thanks for joining us at the Virtual Gold Conference. Thanks a lot, Kerry.